Hi everyone, this is Kona, and I'm going to talk through this example. Uh, by going through this example should help you when you do this week's quiz. So, first you've got your data, which is 63.2, 60.4, 60.4, 62.7, 60 and 62.6. Um, so the N is 5. Um, the first thing that you need to find is the mean, or the mu. That's what this little guy right there stands for. So you're just going to add up all of the data points and then divide by the total number. So you've got your 309.3 .3 when you add those all up, divide by 5, and you get 61.86. So you're going to actually use this 61.86 when you come down to do your variation or your sum of squares. So your variation sum of squares. Um, the sum of squares is the deviation from the mean. So in this case, you're finding the sum, and that's what this right there stands for, is the sum of x, which each one of these is an x value, so 63.2, 60.4, those are all x values, minus the mu, which is your mean, and then squared. So it's the sum of all of these squared. So to start out with, what you want to do is take your first x value, 63.2, so here you've got 63.2 right there, and 63.2, so that's where it's coming from. So your 63.2, 63.2, and minus your mean, your mu, which is your 61.86, and then square it. So that's where you get the 1.34 squared. Then you've got your 60.4, which is from up here, minus your mean, 60.4, and so on to get your 1.34, negative 1.46, negative 1.46, 0.84, and 0.74. So then you square each of those to get these numbers, and then you add them all up, that's the sum part right there, to get your variation or sum of squares is your 77.312. So that one will then be used to find your population variance as well as your sample variance. So technically for this one, if you look, this top part of the formula is the exact same as your variation or sum of squares, so you're just taking this number that you already found, even though I went ahead and wrote it out right there, and you're dividing it by your n, which remember n was 5, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So 7.312 divided by 5 is 1.4624. So that's your population variance, um, and if you're wondering what that little guy right there, that's a sigma, um, and the sigma squared is how you would do your population. That's kind of the symbol for population variance. So then, moving right along, now that we've got the population variance, you can take this number right here, and if you look at that formula, you're just going to take that and find the square root. Technically, it's all of this, but since we already found all of this from these steps above, all we need to do is take that 1.4624 and do the square root of that number. So if we do the square root of that, divided by 5, um, which is that 7.312 divided by 5, which is, so you could technically have just written in there the 1.4624, because this is the same thing, uh, but just the square root of even 7.3.12, 7.312 divided by 5, or the square root of 1.4624 to get your population standard deviation, which there's your just your sigma right there, which is your 1.209. So that's how you find your population standard, population standard deviation and your population variance. So moving along, what about your sample variance or your sample standard deviation? Well, for this one, even though the numbers look different, you're still doing the same thing as you did before, except this time you're doing n minus 1 other than just n. So if you come back up and see here, you've got the, basically the same formula just with n. Uh, for this one, it's n minus 1. So you could do all of this out, or you could just take that 7.312 um, from up here, 7.312, and divide it by n minus 1, which 5 minus 1 is 4, to get your sample variance, which is just s squared, as 1.828. Then, to find the sample standard deviation, you take that 1.828 and take the square root of that. And once you do that, you get s is equal to 1.35. So we've kind of worked through the sample variance and the sample standard deviation, 
And in all honesty, um, the variance and standard deviation are both pretty easy to find as soon as you get the variation. So the variation is the one that takes the longest to do, but once you've got that done, the rest of it actually um, should be pretty straightforward and shouldn't be too hard to work through. Um, also, standard deviation essentially just tells us how spread out the data is. It measures the variation from the mean for each data entry, and the more spread out, the higher the number, the less spread out, the lower the number. So I hope this helps, and uh, good luck on your quiz.